Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are exploring Athlon 200G overclocking. Yeah, an unexpected turn of events. It's now possible to overclock the locked 200G, the semi, sometimes locked 200GE. Now, this appears to be a slip up by MSI with their latest round of BIOS updates for all of the AM4 motherboards. About two weeks ago now, MSI released a new BIOS revision for their full range of AM4 motherboards to include support for the latest version of AMD's generic encapsulated software architecture, otherwise known as AGESA or AGESA. AGESA? I'm going to go with AGESA. This latest feature improves memory support by enhancing overclocking and compatibility and also adds a virtualization related feature that enables the ability to manually assign PCIe graphics cards within IO MMU groups. Anyway, improved support is great and all that, but what we're mostly interested in for today's video is the fact that the Athlon 200G can now be overclocked on MSI motherboards. After looking into this, it is indeed true. I've also tried a few ASRock B350 and B450 boards, but sadly none of those allowed me to overclock for 200GE. However, all the MSI AM4 motherboards that I tried did, and this included a few budget B350 boards right up to the higher end B450 models such as the Gaming Pro Carbon for example. I'm yet to try any of the ASUS or Gigabyte boards, but I will update you guys with those results in the comment section below. So far though, I've only seen reports of this working on MSI boards, so it seems as though MSI has made a bit of a mistake here. A happy accident for budget enthusiasts, it would seem. The good news is the genie's out of the bottle on this one, and there's very little that MSI or AMD can do to put it back in. I suppose MSI can lock the 200G back down with a future BIOS revision, but that doesn't change the fact that you can now get the November release and start overclocking. So to avoid being locked out, you just wouldn't over, uh, you just wouldn't update your BIOS to the newer version until you upgraded your CPU down the track. With the AGESA 1.0.0.6 firmware installed on the MSI motherboard, you simply need to enter the BIOS and apply a standard multiplier overclock. My 200G wouldn't post at 4 GHz. Uh, it would at 3.9 GHz, but even with 1.4 volts, it wasn't stable in Windows. At 3.8 GHz, it was 100% stable with 1.35 volts, so that's what I went with, as that seems to make the most sense here. Unfortunately, the DDR4 memory is still locked down, so I was limited to DDR4 2666, but you can tune the timings to improve performance there, but I haven't done that for the testing in this video. For testing, I have used CL14 memory since that's not overly expensive at the 2400 to 2666 speeds, so I thought that would make the most sense. When compared to the stock out of the box configuration, I was able to increase the core frequency by 19% from 3.2 GHz to 3.8 GHz. Uh, not an earth shattering increase, but every little bit does help here, especially when we're talking about a $55 dual core Zen processor. Unfortunately, I don't have the 200G box cooler, so I'm using the Wraith Stealth for all of the overclocking in this video. Uh, that said, I suspect that the box cooler will probably facilitate this overclock as the Wraith Stealth peaked at just 59 degrees, and that's really respectable, quite cool, and that was after an hour-long blender stress test with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees. For testing, the graphics card used is the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti, and yes, I know, it's an unrealistic GPU to pair with this CPU, but I want to be able to directly compare this data with the data from higher-end CPUs that I've already tested, and frankly, it really makes no difference. As I've recently proven, the margins at 1080p are the same with the GTX 1070 using these low-end CPUs. Then, of course, the entire point of testing and comparing these CPUs is to test CPU performance. What a shocker. Not low-end GPU performance. So using a GTX 1050, for example, would tell us absolutely nothing about these CPUs and be completely pointless for those that want to keep the CPU for a generation or more. Anyway, with all of that made quite clear, I believe, let's just jump into the results. First up, we have the Cinebench R15 results, and here we see that our 19% overclock has improved the multi-threaded score by 13%, so not too bad. That's just 4% lower than our simulated 3.9 GHz overclock using the Ryzen 5 2400G with half the cores disabled. It's worth noting that this overclock allowed the 200G to overtake the Pentium G5400 by a small margin. Testing with Corona shows a mere 7% time reduction for the render test. And not amazing, but it does place the 200G much closer to the Pentium G5400 in this test. Running our overclock through the Blender render test shows a more impressive 14% reduction in render time, and this now places the 200G miles ahead 
of the AVX lacking Pentium G5400. So good stuff here, but I think now it's time to check out some gaming benchmarks. Testing with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we see that the Overclock 200G now offers a 9% boost for the average frame rate and a much needed 15% boost to the frame time performance. The game played noticeably smoother with the 200G overclocked, so while the gains don't seem that significant, uh, they actually are. We find a similar story with Assassin's Creed Origins and now the overclocked 200G is able to match the average frame rate of the Pentium G5400, but kill it for the frame time performance. Testing with Battlefield 1 revealed a really nice 14% increase in average frame rate performance at 1080p, going from 71 FPS to 81 FPS once overclocked. We also see some pretty solid performance gains in Forza Horizon 4, a 9% boost was enough to just push the 200G ahead of the more expensive Pentium G5400. Then we see that the gains in Hitman were quite substantial, a 16% boost is seen at 1080p as the 200G went from a stock result of 38 FPS to an overclock result of 44 FPS. And now the experience is miles better than what you get with the Pentium G5400. Here we have another nice performance gain, this time with Project Cars 2 going from 56 FPS on average to 63 FPS at 1080p uh, once overclocked. Basically it's a free 13% bump in frame rate. The Rainbow Six Siege results are interesting, as the overclocked 200G is still slower than the G5400 at 1080p, but somehow it does do much better at 1440p. Whatever the case, we again see some decent performance gains from the overclock. Previously, I was having a few issues with the Athlon 200G in Star Wars Battlefront 2, but a recent game patch seems to have solved that. I'm not sure if it's related or not, but the game does load much faster on the 200G now, and it actually plays a lot better. We also see a big 16% boost to the average frame rate when overclocking the Athlon processor, taking us from 67 FPS to 78 FPS at 1080p, and here it was much faster than the Pentium G5400. Last up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and please note you will see considerably better frame rates using the built-in canned benchmark, as it's not very CPU intensive and it mainly focuses on GPU performance. So actually playing the game on a low-end CPU will provide very different results, uh, results like what you see here. Overclock the 200G boosted frame rates by 12%, which is decent, but truth be told this game is a bit beyond an SMT-enabled dual core that isn't clocked beyond 5 GHz. So there you have it. With the right motherboard, you can now overclock the Athlon 200G and boost gaming performance by as much as 16%, which is no small margin for an entry-level CPU. As far as I know, right now you will need an MSI motherboard for this overclock, and for those shopping for a new option, I suggest something like the B450M Pro VDH, as it costs just $70, and then you can throw the $55 200G on that, and you have a pretty decent ultra-affordable combo once overclocked. Alternatively, if you're after a, a placeholder, you're using the 200G as a placeholder until Zen 2 arrives, then the 200G will work uh, on a better quality board such as the B450 uh, Gaming Pro Carbon that I used for this video. Having said all that, I strongly suggest you spend the extra $45 on the Ryzen 3 2200G and then you can overclock that if you want to. Uh, it's just a much more capable processor and once you factor in the cost of a really basic $70 B450 board, it means you're only paying about 35% more for that combo and then if you throw in 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory then you're down to like a 20% premium for the much faster 2200G. Anyway let me know what you think of the overclocked Athlon 200G down in the comment section below and if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit the like button you can subscribe for more content just like this and if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching I'm your host Steve and I will see you again next time.